name is Joey Fernandez. I'm coming from Chennai, Kodumbakam. Well, I'd like to take this opportunity to share my experience with God, how close God is to me and I am to Him. The first instance when I came here in 97, of course from childhood my parents instilled God in me. However, I was not that spiritual. But in 97 I came to Divine for a first retreat and it didn't mean anything to me because I just, it was like curiosity, I wanted to know what was going on here. So what happened was when I went back, I got married. Uh, that subsequently here I got married and then my life went on. I have two children and my mother passed away in 98. So even at that point of time I never knew the closeness of God because my mom died with cancer. People were praying, you know, I requested prayers at the Divine, calling Divine Retreat Center for the prayer time and asking them to pray. But at that point of time also I did not know the real meaning. So 98 when my mom passed away, what happened was my dad was with me, rather we were with my dad. Both my, my, my son was born at that point of time. Then life went on. Basically, you know, I was into the boarding sun beads and at the age of 10. And it is here which I got into some bad company. And you know, I started doing some nonsense. I had drinking, smoking, whatever. And then when I came out of the boarding, I, I had aged parents. So they were not, you know, physically strong or even mentally strong to guide me. They, they gave me God, they gave me spirituality, but at that point of time, that age, at 16, 17, for me, my friends, my lifestyle were on my mind. I used to tease girls, I used to smoke, I used to drink, now and then I used to, you know, pull the blues, whatever. At even, but I used to go for Sunday Mass, and during Mass, I used to walk out during sermon, which I, I, I feel and I still feel commonly, the youth are still doing so. They come, I came out and I never knew the sanctity of Holy Communion. Because what I knew today, I never knew then. I used to come out, have a cigarette, go back in time for Communion, receive it and say, Tara, bye bye, that's it. But my mom and dad didn't know that. They didn't know I was up to all this mischief. Because they were so sickly, my mom was very sickly. She had heart, she had, you know, like she was taking 19 tablets a day. So for me or anyone to reveal that, it would have just sent her into a grave immediately. So whatever, you know, I felt I was a goody-goody person, but not bringing it into the house. But actually I was not. I'm telling you, in the heart of heart, with the grace of God, I was not. But then, in 96, I had a massive attack of jaundice. And on that jaund the day they diagnosed jaundice, I was drunk. I pulled the weed, everything, anyone knew. I came back home, I, what do you say, I was totally, I was had 104.5 or something temperature. I was totally shattered. Then the people who I disrespected when I used to do all these things, I used to back answer, disrespect, everything. And they stood by me, that's my mom and dad. And they were old parents and I was born late for them. In fact, I was born 20 years after they got married. They were with me. I was hospitalized, to be honest with you. I seen the gates of death and came back. Jaundice entered my blood and was slowly killing me. It was then my mother sat next to me and she was praying the rosary. And she was a fervent rosary sayer. She would say minimum of at least five to 10 rosaries a day sitting on an easy chair. Even that time, you know, I never knew of, of course, that that's her life, but I wanted to enjoy my life. Then when I was in hospital in 96, Two, three weeks of drips, medication, and all sorts of tests. I came out of it, I came, got, I came out of hospital. And that was the day I myself prayed and said, I tried many times, but I failed with my strength. The only thing I remember even now, it was December 9th, one day after my birthday. I said, I can't stop on my own, Lord. I cannot, I just give myself to you.
from, of course, from the time I felt sick, from this date, it's been 19 years since I gave up smoking and drinking, when I surrendered my life. So what I feel is, let's not do things on our strength, but rely on God. We are human, we tend to make mistakes. But let that mistake happen again. Go back to our mistakes. Then in 97, I got married. In 98, my mother passed away. Now that passing away was really, you know, it was not shocking because I knew she was going. But then, to depart from a loved one, it's like, what do you say, it's very, uh, I, mean, I couldn't take it. I was running here and there. She was bedridden for my, and the worst part is, she did not come for my wedding. She was bedridden. Like, you know, my father was, he came for the wedding and all the relations, they all came for the wedding, but I miss my mom. Like, you know, to be honest with you, when I used to lift her up, I could literally feel her bones cracking, like, like you know, creaking. Like my, and my wife was a great support because she, she used to pray. My wife was very prayerful. She used to tell me, Joey, just pray. I used to think even at that point of time, yeah, sitting at that, sitting at that side of the table, it's easy to say things, but when you're involved. But little did I know that she was also looking out for my mother at night time sitting up, which I didn't know. She didn't tell me that. When my mother died, she was, you know, she was a skin and bone. She passed away. I couldn't take it. And my father, he used to sit day and night reading the Bible to her. I'm looking at my parents' example, that's when the closeness came to, to God for me, from my side. I started becoming more closer. I said, okay. At that point, God gave me strength to take that uh, sorrow which my mother passed away. Then, I was strong till then, but at the graveyard, I broke down. Because at one point of time, you cannot keep it, you can't bottle up. Even then, I didn't realize, I only seen human around me, but I didn't see the hand of God guiding me. The year my uh, mom died, my son was born. So it's what, you know, it's said like, you know, one life goes, one life comes. Exactly after eight months and nine months, my son, his name is Joshua Fernandez, he was born. So you know, God took away which, which he loved, and he gave us one which we also love. So like what I'm saying, God's love was always there, which I didn't realize. Then years went back, I was working in the call center, went back. Then my second child was born in 2004. And uh, her name is Sarah Fernandez, my wife's name is Gillian Fernandez. So Sarah was born, everything seems to be going well and nothing. In 2008, I lost my job. The company closed on where I was working. I was heading the company, being a head of operations there. However, due to mismanagement, financial aspects, the company closed down. Now, I'm the only breadwinner. But all my wife said is, don't worry, we still sustain. I told her, what are you, I, these are the actual words, what are you talking? How are we to sustain? She said, God has blessed you with, still your father is there. We have a roof over our head, we have three meals. That's what we need. We need to be contented with God's given. Don't look at extravagance. You know, I was, I was looking at my colleagues, my friends, my relations. We are all almost of the same age group. They are doing well. And for me, my anxiety, my anxiousness was not for me, but when other families are doing well, and we are still, you know, we are struggling at this point of time, I kept asking myself, why, why, why? But the support from my wife said, don't ask why, thank God. In all our troubles, thank God. But my anxiousness being the head of the house, I wanted to give them the best, but I could not. Of course, I could have asked my father, my father helped me, but then, when we are grown up and married, we need to look after our parents. They are dependent on us, but not, we are not dependent on them. I mean, you know, they need to be dependent on us. But at that, for those two months, I struggled, not only financially, but the mental torture. Will I get a job? Will I get a job? Is my son's school fees? There's so much of anxiety, tension, there's so much of stress. And that's when I actually I developed a slight nervous problem as well. Then my, my in-laws, my sister-in-law, they pitched in, they helped me. My brother-in-law is abroad, they helped me. My mother-in-law all helped me, but then, what am I here for? Help will come one day, two day, but the total sustainability has come from me. It's that's when my wife itself told me, go to divine, don't worry about us, go for a retreat, 
God will definitely open the door. I came here, I went back, the day I went back, two days after that, I got a call from this company, not know what I'm working now, but nearly a company, and I got a job. I'd like to praise and thank God for this, for that opportunity, and from then on, my life kicked off again smoothly. Then in 2010, my wife and myself had a small problem, financial problems and you know like uh, other problems like uh, what do you say, my attitude because of my work, I was going up so I was showing attitude, arrogance, you know like little things I used to get angry and accuse her and lots of other things, accuse my children because you know what I, what I experience is when we are down we be humble but when we as we grow up you know, we think we are God, we are the Lord of everything. But that was, that was really not it. When, in 2010, my wife having some personal problems and financial problems, and you know, like, that's when I bro my wife broke down. I was still working in the old company. The company got a job. And then she couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. In 2010, on Jan 9th, I remember the date, we 10th we reached here again for a retreat. We made a good retreat, we went back. And after I went to retreat, I started all the nonsense over again. Attitude, arrogance, shouting at my children. Like, I did not realize that I came for a retreat to transform myself. Even at the retreat, nonsense was going on. I was showing arrogance at the retreat center. I was, I do not know what entered me. However, when I went back, again, things started going bad. I had my job, but the family fights, relationship, all that started going. My wife again said, we need to go for another retreat. I said, to put off the retreat, to be honest on this testimony, to put off the retreat, I said, I can't get leave. We are going, she said. Something he said, go. I booked the tickets, I reached here. It was in that retreat, that year, the total transformation took place. I could feel Whatever I did, whatever, whoever I ignored, whoever I accused, whatever nonsense happened, the first thing, but what I would like to share here is, without forgiveness, um, no one can transform. I went back after the retreat, I asked for forgiveness to whoever I hurt, whoever hurt me. Whether they accepted or not, but I did my effort. And one thing always keeps coming in mind, Matthew 6, chapter 25 to 34 says, the title itself says, do not worry. Because the birds of the air, they don't sow nor reap whatever, but they are still fed. The flowers are clothed, everything. And the, the, the most interesting verse of the Bible I like is Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye the kingdom of God and everything shall be added unto you. And from that day, I sought the kingdom of God as a layman. And my wife, my family, my children are happy. And my wife told me this recently before we came to retreat. I'm the happiest woman on this earth after what you came for retreat. Like, you know, that's, that's the closeness now my wife and myself have and God and myself. I can talk to God boldly. And I can hear God speaking at times. Number when I came, the first day went, the second day went. The third day, Sunday we reached here, Sunday's retreat, Monday we surrendered. Third day was confessions. To be honest with you, I made a real good confession, which I didn't make in many years. I made a good confession. And the next day was a couple's mass. It's physically eating. You know, like, I, when, the, when the priest kept my wife and myself close, I was thinking, where was this closeness all this time? Because the husband and wife stand together during the couple's mass. We lay our hands on each other. I said, where was all this? And during adoration, I'm honestly telling you, I could see the face of Jesus. The face of Jesus, not just a glowing face, but the face on the cross. That was a face which, like, you know, the eye kept looking at me. And, you know, I just burst out in tears and I started, there are certain things I said which I didn't disclose to my wife at that 
adoration. I don't know if she heard or she didn't hear, but she kept saying sorry. She didn't hurt me, but she kept saying sorry, and that's when I went back and I said sorry, and I said everything. At the adoration, I kept saying sorry, and I saw the face of Jesus. That's when I knew God still loves me. He wants me, and He's never let me from a childhood, and He wants me. That's when I realized if God wants me, who else can I give myself to? That's when I surrendered myself totally. Of course, I'm still human. We tend to fall here and there. But honestly, I say, I forgive. My wife forgave me and I forgave her. It is not your choice. Primarily, she is God's choice for you. You molded my wife as a fitting partner for me. Jesus, he asked your pardon for every pain I inflicted on my wife. This is the man you should always be praying for. It's a man you should always be thanking God for. This is your man. The man you should be sharing your life with. In the plan of God, you should be one with him. At this moment, I accept my husband from your hands to love him, to care for him, to be always there for him. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment of grace. You have taught us to live a marriage as a holy sacrament, as ministers of love, sacred channels of love to each other at every moment. Forgive us, O oh God, we wasted the grace of this sacrament for a long time. Let it be a new beginning that we may become witnesses to your presence and power. From that day till this day, I thank and praise God. My marriage life is smooth. My children, we have a happy family. To give a thanksgiving, we came in 2013 again at the Thanksgiving retreat. From that time to this time, life has been more happier. And in relation to my job, which happened uh, a month ago, I was having certain problems. I'm working in a call center and I was working in a particular process where the manager did not like me. I did not want to mention names here, not like me. He started accusing me and saying, you have so much experience, but it's in vain. You're next to nothing. I have a total work experience of 23 years. But he says, on, we did not know on what basis the company took you, or what basis the previous manager took you into the process. He started accusing me, you know, I was shattered for two, three days. I was sent off home during my work. And then two, three days calling me across the table, accusing me, saying, you're no good. Your work was a waste for so many years and all that stuff. But heart of heart, this time I was so strong with the Lord. I just kept looking at him and just smiling. That made him more angry. I didn't wish to make him angry, but I truly believe that the grace of God that made me just sit calm. I came home, I told my wife, she told me one thing, God loves you. He's not giving you this problem. He's letting this happen for a betterment. At that point of time, I said, like, you know, I was wondering what she's saying. At that point of time, the night prayers, when we say a family prayer, I prayed for him, I forgave him. The very next day, they got a call in the office, went back, they said, we're changing your process and you are being moved to the day shift after 15 years. So I always tell you, when you forgive others, whatever they do to you, because God forgives us whatever, we, whatever small thing we do. Forgive, surrender yourself, and today, in next month, I should be moving to the day shift. No one can do anything if you're strong with the Lord. This is my closeness with the Lord. I would also like to share my uh, family prayer life. From small, my parents instilled the family prayers, the family rosary, the family novena, everything. But at that point of time, you know, for me, it was a hurry to go meet my friends, do my own work. But So I used to come sit for prayers just for the sake of it, not meaning. So forcibly, I used to sit down there, wait till the, I used to be on pins waiting for the prayers to be over. But as life, you know, as I went through life, I got married. And then, after all these things happened, one thing I also realized is, 
a family which prays together stays together when all these you know all the other things happened the nonsense happened i was not sitting for family prayers why if i call the children and my wife for family prayers i'll call them because you know what will they think of the father what will they think of the mother they don't they're not setting example so just to you know make it known that i'm the father and i'm trying to instill these things i did so but i didn't mean it like you know i wanted them to do something but i did not want to do it but just force play sat on there but then from 2010 onwards every day we say the family rosary the consecration to the sacred heart to our lady the michael's prayer and joseph's prayer for our children for every other family and you know that's when the family became closer and closer because out of 24 hours that half an hour was very close because otherwise each one was bothered about their own work but that family prayer strengthened my family and it's still strengthening my family and will it will still strengthen my family that's what my father and mother did that but at that point of time i didn't know the value of it but now i believe my children know the value of it and sometimes they call me dad it's time for prayers so we, we of course we don't have a set pattern because of my working hours but if i'm at home in the morning i work night shifts so if i work if I work is in the night we finish it in the morning if my work if i have any work during the day we finish it but we do not go to bed without family prayers and one more thing it may sound silly but before bed we wish each other good night and say we love you and we forgive you for whatever you done maybe the thing that's what we do it may sound silly but i feel that is a prayer itself the rosary is is it's a weapon against all odds so my family is safe with the family prayer my mom was a very good example when it came to generosity and prayer she was a wonderful person i do not know maybe the spirit or the reflection of my mom has come onto my wife maybe in uh, looks or stature she may be different but she has 99% the qualities of my mom you know and when it comes to prayers my wife is very very not strict firm she says you have to pray and the same was mom says and even when you give mom said son when you give when you help you do certain things look at your giving to god directly don't look at fair or white or whatever color look at jesus and give it to them don't expect just give that's what she always do i don't know what she meant but just give and whoever came to our house or anyone my mom at, i remember for my birthday so maybe very honest when i was from small she used to cook food call the beggars home and make me serve the food for them from the age of 2 i mean she called in one leper and one beggar and she made me give them she made i said no i can't because i was get Jesus and every one of them go and give and you will be blessed in your life she said Ooh.